Hello space fans, we are back with another video for you to quench your thirst for all things space. So buckle right in, because we are going on a flight to the stars. Before we move on, make sure to press the subscribe button and do not forget to hit the bell icon to never miss out on any of our latest space niche videos. Despite another chaotic year on planet Earth, 2021 was a great time for amateur astronomers. Earth-bound spectators witnessed a spectacular ring of fire solar eclipse, enjoyed exceptionally dark skies for the annual Perseid meteor shower, and were treated to a surprise comet Leonard that streaked through the December sky. With any luck, another comet might become visible as it cruises through our solar system in 2022. And amateur stargazers can also view a host of meteor showers and lunar events with nothing more than a pair of binoculars, good weather, and a patch of unpolluted night sky. To help you set your calendar, we've rounded up the most significant celestial events that viewers in North America can hope to glimpse in the new year. Venus, which shines brightly in the skies, will reach its peak of enlightenment on February the 13th. The best time to watch it will be a couple of hours before sunrise in the morning sky. It will be visible low in the southeast sky and will resemble a crescent moon when looking through steady binoculars or a telescope. It will be visible across February and March, and on March 20th, it will reach a half-moon phase. While the stars appear relatively stationary from Earth, our solar system's planets appear to dance around the night sky throughout the year. Sky watchers are in for a treat before sunrise, early in the morning on April the 5th, when Mars will be just 0.4 degrees below Saturn in the east-southeast sky. Gazers would be able to witness the color contrast between the two planets, a yellow-white Saturn and an orangish Mars. Another interesting addition to this meetup will be Venus, 7 degrees apart. Spring will be a busy season for planetary meetups. In the early morning hours before dawn on April 30th throughout May the 1st, the bright reddish Jupiter will appear to rise within an air's breadth of the yellow-white Venus. Look to the southeast about an hour before sunrise for the best view of the close conjunction. And for an extra early treat, viewers on the morning of April 27th will be able to catch a glimpse of the waxing moon hanging close to the duo. In the hour or two before dawn, around 4am local time, wherever you are in the world, look to the eastern horizon for the constellation of Aquarius. You will likely see more than a handful of shooting stars, which are predicted to rain down at rates of 10 to 20 meteors per hour. Those who can't hunt for shooting stars in the early morning of May the 5th, might also be able to catch some stray fireballs near dawn on May the 4th or 6th. These meteors are one of the two showers that occur when Earth passes through the trail of dust and debris left behind by Halley's Comet. The other is the Orionids, a small shower that peaks in October each year. This famous ball of ice and dirt has blazed into our field of vision several times in recorded history. In 1066, a likeness of the fireball was stitched into the Bayou Tapestry. It returned about every 75 years since and will next appear in mid-2061. Viewers across the United States will be able to marvel at part or the duration of a total lunar eclipse when the Earth's shadow completely covers the moon in mid-May, depending on their location, of course. At peak eclipse, the moon will reflect only the sun's rays that are passing through the Earth's dusty atmosphere. The atmosphere will scatter out most of the sun's blue light, bathing the eclipsed moon in a familiar blood-red glow. Supermoons happen when the moon is full at its perigee, or the place in its orbit that is the closest to Earth. This positioning makes the moon appear even bigger than normal, reports Brian Larder from AccuWeather.com. The close approach can make the moon appear up to 14% bigger and 30% brighter to viewers on Earth than the faintest moon of the year, which occurs at the moon's apogee per NASA. 
three supermoons in a row will appear this summer, beginning with one on June the 14th and followed by the ones on July 13th and August the 12th. June's full moon will rise in the southeast around 9 p.m. Eastern time for East Coast stargazers and stay visible in the sky until the next morning. Early risers have the chance to spot a rare alignment of planets in mid to late June as Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn line up in a dazzling row across North American skies. For the best chance to see all five planets in the night sky at once, look to the southeast horizon in the morning twilight. Venus and Jupiter will be the brightest things in the sky, using a stargazing app or star chart to locate the other planets, which should be, ar which should be arranged in a diagonal line, beginning with Mercury low in the eastern horizon and Saturn high in the south. A crescent waning moon will also join the lineup most mornings. As National Geographic notes, the five planets all stand out for being visible to the naked human eye. But those with a telescope and minimal light pollution might also spot a sixth planet, the icy giant Uranus, which hangs a bit higher than Venus and appears as a bright greenish dot. The Delta Aquarid meteor shower will be seen in July. This meteor shower is best viewed from the southern United States or South America, according to Earth Sky. Get up in the hours before dawn to catch about 10 to 20 meteors per hour shooting across the night sky. Much like the Eta Aquarids, these showers will appear to radiate from the constellation of Aquarius, whose name is Latin for the water bearer. This year's shower will coincide with a new moon, which should offer lucky stargazers the darkest skies and the best chances of witnessing a few fireballs. Amateur and seasoned stargazers alike across North America look forward to the proceeds every year for a reliably spectacular show. The colorful fireballs appear to radiate from the constellation of Perseus, named after the legendary Greek hero. Typical shows boast a rate of 150 to 200 meteors per hour, but unfortunately the peak days of this year's shower will coincide with the nearly or entirely full moon, which will brighten the sky significantly and drown out some of the show. To make the most of the night, wait to stargaze until 2 to 3 hours before dawn, after the moon has set, but before the sun's rays start peeking over the horizon. A second total lunar eclipse will cap off the year, starting at around 3 a.m. Eastern Time on the morning of November the 8th. Those along the east coast will be treated to the full eclipse from start to finish, while those in the west and midwest will be able to catch a partial show. Look closely at the reddish light reflecting off the moon's surface during a total eclipse. According to NASA, the moon's rosy hue is the result of the sun's rays bending around the Earth and filtering through its dusty atmosphere. Let us know how excited you are to experience these dazzling celestial events down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe for similar content. Until we meet next time.